Good afternoon, everybody. This is um, Trey Kellum. Um, just giving you guys a little insight of this video, what's to come. I'm just going to cover a couple topics. You know, I'm a big Lakers fan. I played basketball myself growing up. Uh, I'm a former Division One player, played overseas in France. Um, so I have a little bit of uh, a little bit of knowledge about basketball, I would, I would assume. Um, as you can see, I'm in my car. I'm thinking about naming my, my this podcast, the uh, thoughts from my car, you know, this winging it see where I can go but uh the first topic that I'm going to actually discuss is my beloved Lakers um and Russell Westbrook um I'm going to kind of explain why we're kind of stuck with Westbrook and why uh we don't really have any uh anything in the near future as far as him being traded I don't really think it's going to be likely unless they just blow blow it up um, as you know, this offseason, uh, Westbrook picked up his contract uh, for the 2022-23 season of $47.1 million. Um, he signed this deal when he was in Houston. You know, at that time, he was deserving of this money. I'm not saying he's not deserving of it. At that time, he was that, that player. He was that guy. And he, did, he signed that contract, and that's what he deserved. That's what he's going to get. Um, but as you guys can, as you see now, he's, he plays with the Lakers now. Um, we traded for Westbrook, I believe, uh, two years ago. He was playing for the Washington Wizards. Um, the Lakers were just winning, coming off a championship. We just had a down year, so we're trying to, you know, add some more G's back to the franchise. Uh, we, more than likely, we gave up our, our future for Westbrook. You know, we gave up um, Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, Casey, Kyle Will Pope, um, a second-round pick, I believe it was uh, for, for the um, – 2022 we gave up a 2022 first round pick 22nd draft pick i'm sorry so that year that he got traded um, we traded our um our first round draft pick the 22nd pick in the draft we also traded our um a second round pick for 2028 i believe in 2024 so as you can see we gave up a lot in return for westbrook you know we really didn't get a lot out of out of westbrook and i'm going to explain why i think nothing really happened with that with that deal um, as you can see, as you if you watch our team play the Lakers, I'm speaking of, we were never a team that really shot threes really well. Um, we was kind of known for our defense and athleticism and just having LeBron and AD being our staple, you know, being the go-to guys to get the job done. Um, so when you add a guy like Westbrook, you want to make sure you have some kind of shooting on your team. You know, you want to have some shooters. You want to have people that's reliable that's going to make open shots, that's not going to be scared when the lights are bright. And when we traded for Westbrook, we kind of gave up our only couple shooters that we really had. Uh, we had Kyle Kuzma. He wasn't a knockdown shooter, but you had to respect him from the, from the, uh, the three-point line. We gave up KCP, who was our dead-eye shooter. He was really our 3 and D guy. So we traded them. We traded Montrez Harrell. I mean, he really didn't play as much. He kind of uh, didn't fulfill his role off the bench, and he was kind of upset. But, you know, we traded our future for Westbrook and we really didn't get much back and I, I really believe that Westbrook really didn't get a fair shake to start it off with the with the Lakers um this because our play style you know we go through LeBron and AD and when you have Westbrook on the on the team as well you know he's a guy that that needs the ball he's never been a, off the ball kind of player he never's been a guy that's gonna back door he's never been a guy that's gonna you know set back screens and do things like that within the offense to get his to get in the flow you know so in that sense it's kind of like we were kind of hoping that he would change his playing style for the Lakers when he never really changed the way he played his entire career as you can see he played with OKC you know most people say he's the reason why KD demanded up and played and left and signed with the go to say Warriors you know He's the reason he played with Paul George and Melo and OKC still. They didn't really do too much there. You know, he didn't he went to Houston with uh, James Harden, you know, and, you know, couldn't really change his playing style there, you know. And then he went to Washington, you know. Good player. He's filling, he's filling the stats, but he's not, as you, I can say, it's not producing any wins. So uh, he always been that guy that's going to – he's a guy that you want on your team if you're looking for ticket sales. I'm not trying to diminish what he did in the NBA or what he's done. He's a Hall of Fame player. He's averaged a triple double, triple double for three straight years. So he's very capable of being that guy on the court, as he has showed us before. But at this time being 2022, 2023 going into the season, he's not a guy that you really want on your team that's going to actually get you to the promised land because he has never done that before. So going back to last year, you know, we got LeBron and AD who just won the bubble championship, you know, 
uh, we're trying to retune, re refine our roster with, with Westbrook and other players. And I just feel like Westbrook really never fit our playing style. He um, he never really got a fair chance with the coaches, I believe. I just feel like, you know, him having that ego. When you're an NBA player and you're known for being, you're a Hall of Fame player, top 75 a lot of times. So you're going you're gonna to have some kind of ego for sure. You're going to have outstanding confidence. Um, and this is how you carry yourself. You've never been a guy that's been told, don't do this, don't do that, don't shoot this, don't do that, taking you out the game. He's never been coached like that before. And it's kind of like, I understand where he's coming from as far as a, me being an expert, not to his to his status, but just understanding that, hey, I've been doing this for 16 years, 15 years now. Now you're telling me that I can't do this, I can't do that. So I feel like he was never given a real a real fit with the Lakers coaching staff. But to, to, their, to the coaching staff's credit, you know, he said that he was willing to sacrifice his game to be a part of the team. That was uh, what was reported to the Bleacher Report at ESPN. He sat down with LeBron, AD, and he pretty much said, hey, you know, I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to win. It's about getting a championship. He's a he's a hometown kid from L.A., and, you know, and it kind of just went. Uh, it was a nightmare for Westbrook, to say the least. You know, I don't know if people really watch the games for L.A. I'm a Lakers fan. I watch every single game. Um, i never seen a player, you know, He's very talented. He's a he plays very hard. You know, he has a motor of a of a Toyota Camry. But a lot of times when you're in LA, we don't need the motor of a Toyota Camry, and not when we paying you 47 million. You know, we want you to actually go out there and make shots and be that game changer, not be the guy that's trying to you know hype the, the crowd up and and loose balls. We expect you to do things that only a handful of people can do in this in this in this world. And we the m amount of money that's being paid for you at this time in the present, you're not really fulfilling your your, uh, your duties to your team so I feel like uh, the Lakers really never gave him a shot but I think he never really gave the Lakers a shot to really play him how he should have been played and you know it just it went downhill he had one of his worst shooting splits of his career you know uh, he was coming off the bench he wasn't finishing games the media was constantly calling him West Brick so I can just imagine his confidence is shot you know he really just he was not himself the entire year. And then on top of that, the Lakers were injury prone all year. LeBron, AD, gone, come back, gone, come back. But one constant was Westbrook. But, you know, still we're losing with him, with AD, without AD, with LeBron, with both of them, still losing. Um, I feel like the entire NBA, they kind of know that, hey, the Lakers are willing to do pretty much everything to get off of a, a Westbrook contract, but trade their future, which is their 2027 first round pick and 2029 first round pick. Now keep in mind earlier in the video, um, I kind of explained to you guys that we already mortgaged our future for Westbrook in return of not even making the playoffs, you know, not even making the bubble. You know, I don't know if you guys know if you really follow the league yet or not, but the, the bubble, well not the bubble, well, not, but the play-in tournament, I'm sorry, the play-in tournament. Um, the playoffs used to be the top eight teams in each conference uh, since the pandemic came around, you know, they, they uh, integrated a new system where actually 12 teams actually can fight for the playoffs. So really they have an uh, extra bonus shot to make the playoffs. Rather than it being the top eight, it's really the top 12. And then those four teams sitting outside the eight, they have a little mini tournament and then you get into the playoffs. But, you know, we didn't even make the, the play-in tournament to say. So it tells you how bad our, our season went. Um, so a lot of teams watching us crumble, fold under the pressure, laughing stock of LA, you uh, know, and we're in that win now state. We got LeBron James, who I believe is honestly the second greatest player of all time behind Michael Jordan. Um, you know, LeBron had an excellent year. Even though we didn't get the wins, he still averaged 30 points, eight rebounds, I believe six assists. You know, LeBron was still LeBron. So, you know, AD, he got to get, stay healthy, but I believe in AD. He showed me that he's capable and willing to, to do the work he just got to stay healthy and stay in the gym. But I believe in those two guys for sure. Um, but, you know, we're in that we're in that win now mode. You know, we the Lakers, as you know, we're a story franchise in the NBA. We've never been a team that, um, you know, drafted players from the draft. As you think about it, we traded for Kareem. We traded for, uh, traded for James Worthy. We traded for Shaq. Traded for Kobe. Kobe got drafted to the Charlotte Hornets. We traded Vlad Vladi Divac for Kobe. No one knew who Kobe was going to be, but the Lakers traded for him. So we've never been a team traded for Dwight, traded for Steve Nash, traded for Carl Malone, traded for Gary Payton. Even though we didn't win with those guys, we never really go through the draft. So that's kind of like, kind of confusing on why Jeannie Buss 
isn't willing to give up her future for better players to get off of a Westbrook contract and possibly win this year and be able to stay in contentions for the years to come. Um, I understand it though. She's a she's the um, the owner of the team. She oversees everything. Um, she just gave up Kyle Kuzma for Westbrook, who was their first round pick. He actually is a young, bright player, you know, young, talented guy. Uh, they traded their 2022, their uh, second round draft pick for 2024. Traded a second round draft pick for 2028. Traded their first round pick from the 2021 draft, I believe. Uh, and they also traded a handful of players that was actually rotational players in our in our championship run from the year before. So I understand why she's kind of hesitant on, you know, LeBron and AD. You guys wanted Westbrook. You wanted this guy on the team. And now you want me to mortgage more of my future for for you guys' present. When I can kind of – I understand where she's coming from because two, three years from now, LeBron's going to be retired and who knows what 80 is he going to resign? I don't. We don't really can look that far into the future. But she knows one thing is for sure: we have two draft picks that's going, that's unprotected. So who who's to say that 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 draft pick could be the next LeBron, the next Kobe, and we mortgage it off for a potential pairing of Buddy Hills and Buddy Hill and Miles Turner, who's not who are not bad players, but you know you don't want to. As being an owner, you only have so much of your draft picks left for the future. You kind of you know you're stuck in a in a predicament where I just traded, I just mortgaged 75% of my future for a player who didn't return nearly anything of what I thought I was going to get. So we're in this dilemma right now with the Lakers, you know, can't get off the Westbrook contract. We were in talks of trying to get Kyrie. Uh, we were unwilling to trade our first round, our first, uh, first picks from the 27 and 29 draft pick. Um, uh, and now I'm seeing reports that we were willing to trade it, but I'm not understanding why the deal didn't get done. Maybe it was just uh, smoke in the mirrors. I don't know, but that deal never kind of fruition. And as you all guys, you know now, K Katie and Kyrie, you know, staying in Brooklyn. So that's off the table. Um, so now we just got to kind of look forward to the to the future of, you know, the Lakers in this season. You know, whenever you got LeBron and, and AD, you got to fight. You got a puncher's chance. You know, we may not have this, the strongest punch that we had two years ago, but we still got a puncher's chance to, you know, get to the Western Conference Finals. You know, Clippers going to be pretty good this year. The Denver Nuggets still got Golden State. You got Memphis, a team that's young and hungry. So, uh, you know, the Lakers, we're just kind of a, we're laying low, trying to keep our head high, you know, playing the underdog role. But you're a team from L.A. There's no way you're the, we're never going to be the underdogs. We're expected to be great, expected to win, expected to get the job done as in the words of Kobe um but you know that's gonna be a, a interesting season coming up to see how the pairing of LeBron Patrick Beverly another alpha dog in the locker room a Chicago native guy um it's, it's funny to see how him and Westbrook are gonna are gonna uh fill each other out you know they were enemies on the court for years and now it's being reported that their Westbrook said what he it's being reported, I'm sorry, that Bradley said that Westbrook is, if he would have called anybody his best friend, you know, he would label Westbrook as his best friend. Um, but, you know, I still have hope for my Lakers. You know, we uh, we got LeBron still, you know. And when you got LeBron, anything's possible. He's still a top top five player in the league, despite what ESPN ranked him previously last week. I think they ranked him a number at seven or eight, which is kind of blasphemy. Like, the guy is still a monster. Like, just because he's 38, take out his age. That guy's still a man. He's still a man amongst boys out there. Um, you know, hopefully AD stays healthy. Um, hopefully, you know, if Westbrook stays on the team, hopefully he he can incorporate his positives into a team goal instead of trying to be stank, maintaining this I am the triple-double machine of the past and I'm just how I'm going to play. It's going to maintain this way. Hopefully he can, um, you know, scale back just a little bit don't want him to scale back too much where he's not aggressive and not looking to be uh looking for a shot and not playing with that ferocity we need that from Westbrook. we need him to be him at the end of the day but we need you to allow lebron james and ad to be who they are and we can't have all three of you guys on the court being who you are somebody has to give up something and i'm sorry Westbrook. you're the third you're the third fiddle out of the out of the three you know um we got a new coach darvin ham you know tough tough guy played for the Detroit Pistons um blue collar guy hard worker I believe he's gonna uh bring the best out of our team this year I really do I really think so um 
and we'll just see where it takes us hopefully you know me being a lakers fan i hope that we can kind of come to some kind of come sign a deal with westbrook you know i would i really don't want to see lebron you know waste his, waste another year at la and not make make the playoffs that's kind of ridiculous hopefully he can get back into the playoffs but um me being a fan of the game and just really watching and studying it, I'm, I'm hoping that we can come to some kind of deal that we can get off of this contract with Westbrook. And maybe, you know, he can get to a team where he feels that he's wanted because you don't ever want to feel not wanted from a franchise. You know, he's answering questions from the media, uh, I believe, on their um, on the opening night for media availability for the uh, preseason. He's ask, answering questions. How does it feel for the Lakers not to want you? You shouldn't have to answer a question like that, being a professional athlete of his stature, you know. So hopefully both sides to come out with a deal that, that benefits both the Lakers and Westbrook, you know. Um, you know, we really didn't do much this offseason um, in my eyes. I mean, we picked up some some decent players. You know, Patrick Beverly is going to be a nice uh, piece for us. Thomas Bryant from Washington Wizards, he's going to be nice. Keep that in watch. He's going to be a nice guy for it. He can stretch the floor. He just got to stay healthy. He can stretch the floor. He got a high motor. He's going to be nice. Um, shoot the ball. He's a big man, 6'10". Uh, we picked up. I like Lonnie Walker from the Spurs, you know, athletic wing. Uh, he can shoot. He, he has spots where he's streaky, but I believe with the proper work in the gym, proper training, he can get his shot more consistent. He's a hell of an athlete. Um, that's what LeBron needs out there, you know, somebody he can advance the ball up the court and they can finish you know uh but you know it's gonna be uh we're gonna it's a it's a uphill battle for the lakers this year we're not favorite you know we're not really respected as i think we should be um so this is a, a year to for a lot of proving that, that lebron and ad and the rest of the lakers are gonna have to you know play with a chip on the shoulder hopefully you know that we stay healthy we get the job done and we make a little bit of noise in the west you know at least get us back to the western Conference finals i ain't i'm a realist you know i i'm not going to say i'm expecting the championship i'm expecting a western conference of finals appearance and you may you may look at me crazy but that's what i'm that's what i'm expecting from my team um but you know i'm gonna try to keep you guys updated throughout the season you know about the lakers and what's not happening what i think should happen um you know it's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. You know, also we got Kendrick Nunn, who didn't play last year. Uh, funny thing, I played against him in high school. Uh, we both were all state coming out of high school in Illinois. But um, hopefully he stays healthy. He's a nice shooter. He's a consistent young guy, another guard that we need out there that can shoot the ball. We got some young players though. Austin Reeves. I like who we drafted in the draft. Uh, Mac Mac Christie. Um, we got another guy, Cole Swindler. He can shoot that. He can shoot that ball now. He's 6'10". He just got to find his way into that rotation. He got to do the little things. Get on that floor. But um, hopefully, you know, we uh we come to work this year. You know, we're the Lakers, baby. We got to we got to show why we wanted we, a story franchise. We wanted the the faces of the NBA. And um, you know, hopefully with this West. Westbrook situation and all the, the drama in LA. Are we going to trade him? Do we want him? Is he sucks? This he's. I, I'm not going to say he sucks. He does not suck. He's an NBA player, of course. I just feel like it's all about fit. It's all about a fit, man. Like I may have this Lamborghini, but I can't fit it into this parking spot because this this F-150 and this King Ranch that's on the side of me. You know, they they parking double. They double parking. So I can't put that Lambo in there. You know what I'm saying? So that Lambo may have to go down to Sacramento. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that he's not a he's not sought out. Well, maybe his his value, I'm, I'm not going to lie, his value has decreased with his poor showing of last year. So he has to show himself. What's, another thing is going to be pretty interesting. Um, he This is his last year of his contract. He just picked up his contract extension for $47.1 million uh, that I mentioned earlier. It's gonna be interesting to see after this season what kind of what kind of offers he gets from uh, upcoming suitors in the free agent market. See, in the free agent market, because you know he jumped on that on that forty seven point one million fast, and I don't blame him. But you know he didn't want to negotiate. He didn't want to really you know bargain with that. Let's negotiate his deal to help us get players. He just he took his deal, took his money, and I don't blame him for that. Get your money, get your coins while you can. You want to be in the league for so long, but um. It's gonna be interesting to see uh, what kind of offers he gets, uh, what kind of feedback he gets from other teams. Uh, he fired his longtime agent. You know that was a that was a huge story this offseason as well. Um, 
is aging. It's pretty much saying, hey man, it's better that you just, you stick it out and play here. But from the reports that I read from ESPN, it seems like Westbrook really was trying to force his way out. And his agent was like, hey man, look, this is this is the best it's gonna be for you at this moment. Like, opt in, play this contract year out, and hopefully you can play yourself with another deal. Don't force a trade. So you being traded to three or four teams in the last three years gonna hurt your hurt your value. You know, they're not gonna see you the same. So he let go of his longtime agent. But you know, things happen in the league. It's a very fast, fast paced environment. Things happen constantly. You gotta you gotta keep it. You gotta keep keep your head afloat and just keep your head down and work. And uh, hopefully, you know. This won't be just a one-time thing. I can upload more videos and, um, you know, see, upload you guys about my Lakers. And just about other things in the NBA. It's a lot of a lot of things going outside in the league with the Boston Celtics and their, and their, and their coaching situation. I'm hearing things that was being reported um, from what Matt Barnes said recently. Um, he should be he should be lucky if he even can be a head coach in the NBA for, in the future to come. So it's something that the media is not reporting. It's more than um, he had a consensual relationship with, with this unknown lady with, on the on the staff with the Boston Celtics. It has to be deeper, and uh, I'm I'm interested to see uh, what's going to be released to the media uh, in the upcoming days and weeks about that situation. But um, yeah, it's going to be a fun side in uh, NBA season. You know, hopefully I'm here to keep you guys updated. You know, we just had a hurricane down here in, in uh, Florida. Uh, it kind of skipped over us. I'm kind of going off topic, but, you know, I'm just kind of keep you guys in loop about me. But, uh, yeah, kind of skipped over us. I, I was supposed to upload this video a couple of days ago, but, you know, things happen. Things happen all the time. But, you know, hopefully, back on topic, hope my Lakers do what they're supposed to do this year. I got my Bulls hat on. This is, I'm an Illinois guy from Peoria, Illinois, but I'm a Lakers fan to the heart. Everybody knows that. Um, get the job done, LeBron. Get the job done. Peace out.